Hey guys, Michael South and Curtis Taylor here with the uh, Total, Krav Total Krav Maga branch of the Global Martial Arts University. You might be wondering why Curtis is wearing such a stylish jacket today. Uh, we're just doing a short video about side clinch control and adding side clinch combatives, adding combatives from the side clinch position. So side clinch as we normally do it, uh, I've got the control on the head and then I've got an underhook and that, that's where I'm at. Okay, it's obviously a lot more complex than that but that's just what I'm talking about here. I've got them wearing the jacket because people wear jackets, people wear clothes, hopefully, uh, and so we're, if we can utilize it, we will, um, but we're gonna talk about when you would and when you would not do that. So uh, first things first, I am gonna control this arm that's closest to me with the, uh, with the underhook when I'm doing that style of side clinch. I'm gonna have a good arm stop here. I'm stopping him from moving into me uh, by having a bent elbow. I'm controlling his posture. If he's standing straight up, that's not good for me. I want him to be bending over a little bit and then I maintain the ability to throw combative. So when I do it like that, it looks like this. Underhook and I just kinda hang my hand right around his shoulder area. I wanna be biting down with some pressure here. I've got my hand reaching around like, a, like I tell my kids, it's like a, a hook and umbrella and I, get it right there. I don't want my arm to be out straight. I want it to be bent like this. And then again, I'm controlling his posture. So I'm way out here like this. So my center leg, one of the rules of side clinch is my leg gets in between his legs. That must be my back leg. I cannot have my stance like this because he can easily grab and take me to the ground. He can't grab me my leg with this arm because I've got this good underhook. So that has to be my back leg. Another rule is when I throw downstairs combatives or knees or, or kicks, it has to be with that center leg. They've got to be good, quick, violent ones. I've got to go boom or boom, boom, but it has to be with that one. I don't want to go up here and then give them the ability to, to take me down. Okay, so unless it's like a big finisher, like then I'm not gonna do combatives, downstairs combatives with that leg. So this is where I want everybody hanging out most of the time. I'm biting down here, biting down on the head. I've got knees to the head, knees to the head, to the face, groin. I've got, I can stomp on that knee, whatever the case might be. And then upstairs, I've got a lot of combatives available as well. Um, I'm controlling the posture. The posture control is with the hand that's on the neck, okay? So I can take my hand off to, to do strikes with it, but just know that they, you might lose posture control there as well. So that's why when we're here, Downstairs combatives are not only stronger, more powerful, a little bit safer uh, as far as maintaining the, um, the control that you have here. So if I cause a lot of pain, knee him right in the solar plexus and he's just really in pain, hopefully he'll stay down there for a second. I've got hammer fist. Uh, there's this like nice soft portion right behind the ear at the base of the skull. I can hit right there, that, that'll do some damage. I can punch, I kind of practice punching like this. I'm hitting with my front two knuckles only and I'm practice kind of racking the jaw. Uh, so I can hopefully knock him out or something great like that. Um, I've got elbows here. I've got kind of number six elbows. I don't really like number seven elbows so much from here, just because um, you, you know I, I can do that, but I don't. I don't want to hit. I don't want to graze off his head, hit my funny bone, anything like that. And I just don't. I, I don't. I don't like where where I'm hitting there. Uh, so I prefer punches, hammer fists, but mostly the downstairs combatives, the knees, the knees and the kicks and stuff like that. From here I've got, I can move on to other controls like the head roll, I can do snap downs and just snap them straight down to the ground, all sorts of good stuff. But this is where we hang out quite a bit uh, in Krav Maga. So when you guys are finishing your defenses, you know, you do the release, whatever it might be, uh, choke defense, uh, you know, whatever. And then I want you to get to a good side clinch. Show me a, a couple of unique combatives. So don't just one, two, three, four, five, six, and then disengage. You know, let's see a couple of different things. Let's see one, two, three, then out. Something, uh, you know, unique uh, from, from each other. Uh, one is different from the other. So this is where I want you to hang out most of the time. Now, if they're wearing a nice, stylish, sturdy jacket like this, another way that I can side clinch, if I don't maybe have time to bring in, pull them off posture, uh, that sort of thing, I can just kind of have more of a stiff arm kind of thing. So when I'm doing this, if I can grab something, that is, that is ideal. I can even have this and this, uh, and what I like about that is this provides uh, almost like a fulcrum here, and I can be getting my 
elbow into him, I can, I'm almost like shaking him, and every time he's getting elbowed. Uh, it, it doesn't look like, a, I don't, you know, it doesn't look like him traveling from a long distance and striking with a lot of force, but it's very jarring because you're yanking him side to side, and they are getting hit with a pretty solid surface every time, right in the jaw where it doesn't feel great. That's really good. So when we teach about like uh, uh, dealing with multiple opponents and things like that, if I were forced to use this guy as a human shield for his buddies over here that are also trying to fight with me, if I can control his jacket. Anytime he gives me some trouble and uh, starts to resist, I can hit him, make him bend over a little bit more. I can be hitting him with the elbows like that and I'm moving him around, moving him around, boom, 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 to keep him in between me and, and the other people or, you know, just for good side clinch combatives. Um, so, and, and one thing that I wanted to go over as well is breaking the posture down. Nothing drives me crazy more faster when I see people like touch and go like that. I don't know why you would do that. You know, you're, not, you, you're not controlling him. Uh, you're, you're not bettering your position at all. You might as well keep your hands on your face and protect yourself and throw a good thrust knee uh, if you're gonna do that. If you're gonna do a side clinch, you have to, again, control the posture. One of the things I discuss a lot, especially for uh, being a smaller person and, and fighting with a bigger person or defending yourself, rather, against a, a bigger person, is if I come up and just try to make him bend over, he's got a lot of back muscle. Okay, so he won't just bend over just because I'm pulling his head down. It's very, very hard. Even us being the same size, I can't really get him to bend over very much uh, just by pulling him, okay? But what I can do, even if he's big, tall guy, is if he's here, okay, I reach around, like I said, the umbrella thing, I reach around to the far side of his neck, so way over here on the, the opposite side, far side away from me. Reach like this, and then I begin to get my underhook, okay? So I'm going to step forward, I'm going to do like a circle step, like this, forward and around. When I make my around step, I'm yanking him, yanking this far side of his neck, directly towards that other side foot. I do that and then I pull around. What that does is it pulls them sideways off balance and then around once they're on balance. So when he catches himself with his foot, so he doesn't fall on his face, He's perfectly in a side clinch with his posture broken down. So I don't just walk up somebody and try to just make him bend over and do that. And, you, and you'll catch yourself doing that with your training partners because he's not a real attacker. He's acting to help me out so I can practice my defenses. Uh, so you, you gotta catch yourself doing that. I, if I'm just going here, boom, not a realistic defense. Nobody's gonna let you just own their posture like that. I move in and I yank him around the corner. Boom! And that's normally where I get those big groin kicks because they have to catch themselves like this. I've got an awesome open shot. And I'm going to drive my shin into his pubic bone and try to break his pelvis. It's going to be really nasty. Uh, so I want to end up like that. So he's up. Don't let me break your posture. Just like that. One more time. He's upright. He's not going to let me. I'm pulling around like this. Here. I go, Oof. that's what breaks them down. Now I need to be supplying a constant stream of combatives to make sure that his posture stays down. Once I have all that stuff correct, um, that's just gonna add a whole other awesome dimension to all of your Krav Maga defenses because that side clinch position is where we end up most of the time. And so, and that's what I tell my students, like no matter what the scenario is, um, we can't possibly go over every different variable with which somebody can attack you, uh, but we can get, you know, we, we can understand uh, the, the different concepts, apply it to whatever they, they come at us with, and the goal is to find yourself somewhere where you've been a million times in training. Because if we can do that, that that's, that's where obviously ultimately where we're gonna survive, where we're gonna def defend ourselves. So whatever the scenario might be, if you, if you find yourself in most of your defenses finishing it off in side clinch, well then you better have a super awesome side clinch. So drills like that, uh, I want you to go live with your partner. Don't rely too much on combatives because you're not really doing the combatives, are you? You're, if, I'm, if I'm relying on kneeing somebody in the solar plex so hard that it knocks the air out of them and stuff, 
I doubt you're really doing that every day to your training partners because they probably wouldn't want to train with you anymore, okay? So don't rely on that too much. Understand how to, how to actually do it for real and then, so how to actually break the posture down effectively without even striking. I'm not even, I'm not even working with any pain compliance. I'm just doing it in a structurally correct way where it works anyway. Then when you actually add combatives, if God forbid you ever had to in order to defend yourself, you're definitely going to be okay because you've, you've got pain compliance. You're beating them up. You become the attacker. You're overwhelming them with your intensity and you know how to do it correctly anyway Way, even if you're getting a lot of resistance. So when I say go live, I mean if I'm the, the uh, person that's getting beat up in the side clinch, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stiffen up a little bit and I'm not just going to be a rag doll and let my partner move me around however they want to. I'm going to make them pull me off balance and do that correctly. And then also, of course, safety and training. Notice every time I got him here, pulled him around, this hand comes up. Okay, he's not letting me knee him. Boom. He's touching my knee every time. So that is uh, just a little bit more detailed look at the side clinch, uh, control from side clinch and adding combatives from there. If you have any questions about this technique or any other technique, please feel free to email an instructor. Have an awesome day.